Good morning, Central. Every morning is a good morning when you start it off with the recognition that God is on His throne, that He's got control of the day, and when you spend some time together in His Word with people who share those same convictions with you. So I'm glad that you're here. Let's get this day rolling to a good start. You know, yesterday, when we last left James, I was eating some pie my wife had made for me, and we were considering how God is jealous for you. God, like a jealous husband, won't share his loyalty, your love for this world, because a friend to this world is actively registering yourself as an enemy to God. You can expect that anything you place between him and you is going to generate some wrath. But James then says in verse 6, but he gives more or he gives a greater grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Let's talk about grace for a moment. God's unearned, unmerited favor. Even though what we really deserve is his wrath. God's grace is greater than the wrath we deserve because of our unfaithfulness to him. I'm constantly amazed by people who decide for God what he ought to do. God ought to overlook people's sins. I'm no saint. I deserve to be happy. Nobody's perfect. It sounds even more uh, palatable when it's for other people. Boys will be boys. They can't help the way they are. When James says God gives a greater grace, it doesn't say there he gives it unconditionally. Grace isn't unconditional. Are you listening? God's wrath isn't unconditional, neither is his grace. That's different than saying whether or not we deserve God's grace. We already can't. But we can't expect that God is just going to make us accept this greater grace. Let me illustrate this with something that's close to home right now. We are all feeling the oppression of the coronavirus. And one of the hopes that's being held out ahead of us is for a vaccine. Now, just for the sake of an illustration here, let's say that a vaccine is exactly what we need, that it will be effective, safe, and 100% guaranteed protection against the virus. Okay, let's just say that for now. It's there. Someone else has developed it. You didn't but it's yours for free. You can't pay for it because some wealthy person has already foot the bill. Let's say that's what's going on, okay? But there's a catch. You have to go get the shot. No one's going to come tackle you and force it on you. You can't earn it, but receiving it is not unconditional. There's something for you to do. If you expect to have the promised benefits of the antidote. You may even have to wait in line for an hour, but that's not earning it. Would you do it? Well, if it guaranteed your protection, if it guaranteed you absolute protection, would you meet the conditions to be able to have that? What follows here in James's letter is the conditions to receive God's greater grace. You can't earn it. You can't do this on your own, but there are conditions here, he mentions. If you want God to be your enemy, be proud. And God gives grace to whom? The humble. Give a listen to the rest. Starting again in verse 7. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves, therefore, before the Lord, and he will exalt you. You want God to exalt you? That's really what we're hoping for, isn't it, in Jesus? We are waiting to be made like Jesus. We're waiting to be told, well done. We're waiting for the glory that is to be revealed to us. How does that happen? Verse 10 is James's summary of everything he has just said. Draw near, cleanse your hands, purify your hearts, be wretched, mourn, weep. In shorter words, 
humble yourselves. God opposes the proud. Humble yourselves. That is probably a pretty good summary of what it means to follow Jesus, isn't it? Think of all the different ways we try to describe that. Like, it is yielding to Him as Lord. It's denying yourself. It's becoming a servant to all. It's taking up your cross. It's storing up treasure in heaven. It's becoming like a child. The list goes on and on and on. And James has managed to put it into a single word in the original here by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Humble yourself. Can you trust God to keep his end of that today? It's not easy to lower yourself, but if you believe God, it's a no-brainer. You can make God your enemy, or you can humble yourself and have his promise that he will exalt you. I'll take door number two, Monty. Let's pray. Father, I confess to you this morning, it is not always easy to very deliberately humble myself, to lower myself, to put others ahead of myself, or to keep from exalting myself. I need your help with that. Maybe many listening here today are struck with the importance of that as we see it summarize what it means to follow you. Father, I pray that that humility of mind will be evident to the people around us, that we are of our own goodness, our own ability, not enough. And so this morning, as we start this day together, Father, it is by humbling ourselves again, saying thank you for your wonderful gift of grace, and Lord, uh, laying before you everything about ourselves that we know needs to be cleansed and changed. So we invite you today to be doing that work by your Spirit in our lives. Thank you for reminding us of it today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm humbled that you're here. I'm glad that uh, all of you are here today and uh, hope that you'll join me in making an effort to really humble ourselves before the Lord in the assurance that one day he's going to exalt us. What a great message to share with people who need words of encouragement today. Would you take a moment and share this post? Click share and share it with some friends. Maybe think of three specific friends that could benefit from hearing it today. And let's get this good word out to someone else that needs to hear it today. Plan to see you tomorrow. Till then, God bless you. Have a great day.